Hello and welcome to our discussion of the case study, the Internal Revenue Service Automated Collection System. This case dates back to 1989 and uh, focuses on collection function of the U.S. Internal Revenue Service (IRS). <coughs> collection was a major portion of IRS operations. IRS was encountering difficulties in its first full-scale automation of collection function. This project was called Automated Collection System, short form ACS. IRS had completely reorganized the operation, put millions of dollars into new technology. However, it appeared that the situation became worse than before. Turnover in the newly automated operation had reached very high level as high as 100 percent. High turnover was of great concern to the IRS. The labor pool was shrinking and it was difficult to attract people to work for the federal government. The morale of employees and supervisors was suffering. Even senior managers were complaining about the new system. IRS felt that there was an urgent need to understand how to manage an automated environment. They thought they still did not fully understand the effect new automated collection system produced on employees. There were unique problems and concerns which many times led to distrust between management and employees. While the monitoring function of ACS kept employees busy, they felt they were being policed constantly. ACS had increased productivity. Dollars collected had increased about 33% annually. Inventory levels had declined considerably. And the total number of cases closed had improved 100%. Moreover, all of these improvements had been made with half the staff employed for automation. However, IRS felt that productivity was not as high as it could be and would decline if the problems were not addressed. Two issues required closer examination. First, the way the work was organized and second, the manner in which computer-aided monitoring of employee performance was handled. The primary function of IRS was to collect revenue for the U.S. government. In 1988, for instance, the IRS had received and processed more than 194 million tax returns, collected approximately 935 billion US dollars, and dealt with 83 million taxpayer requests for information or assistance. It operated on a budget of US dollar 5 billion in fiscal year 1988, with 120,000 employees operating in more than 700 offices in the United States and abroad. Technology had always played a central role in the IRS operations. In 1960, IRS integrated manual and computerized processing of tax returns into a basic processing system design that remained in place until 1989. Although the IRS had tried to constantly update the system with additions and new equipment, the system was limited by its design. That means employee training will not help improve service level, especially bring it up to the one-stop service level usually provided by the private financial sector. This failing was unacceptable for IRS top management. The only realistic solution was to undertake an unprecedented effort to modernize the entire information processing system of IRS. However, while IRS was committed to automation in order to provide the best service to taxpayers, it wanted to be very careful about the impact it would have on IRS employees. IRS top management wanted to make the IRS a good place in which to work. The IRS organization consisted of a central office in Washington, D.C. and 63 regional district offices. Each district office had six divisions, 
collection was one of the six divisions. For more information, see the organizational chart of IRS provided in the case. Collection was called collection office function, short form COF or COF. Collection was responsible for handling cases in which the IRS had accounts receivable. These cases were originated in one of the 10 national service centers operated by IRS. Service centers were where taxpayer returns were filed and processed and bills for unpaid taxes or notices for unfiled returns were issued. The Integrated Data Retrieval System, short form IDRS, was a central information system that maintained data on all taxpayers and the status of their returns. IDRS generated a series of notices to the taxpayer. If, after the fourth notice, the case was not resolved, it was forwarded to collection function for further action. Until 1983 to 1984, the collection operation was organized as 63 district office sites. The IRS then decided to automate and organize the collection office function where a major problem was keeping ahead of the inventory of work. Computerizing the operation was the only solution to reduce the paperwork. Introducing computer technology resulted in a reduction of collection sites from 63 district offices to 20 district offices. These offices were also called call sites. Each of these offices served multiple districts. It also resulted in a reduction of employees from 5,000 to 2,500. These cases handled by these call sites still originated in the same way as they did for COF. The new collection operation was called the Automated Collection System, short form ACS. See the Exhibit 2 of the case study for a list of relationships among the service centers, ACS call sites and districts. The same Exhibit 2 is shown below as well. On this slide, we shall talk about the structure of the collection office function. Uh, the collection office function was organized uh, along six basic functions. Uh, these functions were uh, process review units, outgoing call units, office field units, incoming call units, a walk-in unit, and research unit. Exhibit 3 shows the layout of a typical collection office function. When cases arrived from the service center, they went to the process review unit. Process review unit categorized cases by individual and business accounts and batched them in large open trays. If there was no way to contact the taxpayers by phone, a letter was sent. These letters generated the incoming calls and taxpayers appearing in person at the walk-in unit. Accounts for which a telephone number could be identified were sent to an outgoing call unit. The outgoing call units primarily made outgoing calls. The office collection representatives worked at desks with trays of paper accounts. Each paper account was reviewed before telephoning the taxpayer. Upon completion of the call, office collection representatives would note on history sheets what had transpired during the exchange. This information plus correspondence to and from the taxpayer added to the amount of paper handled in collection office function. The office field unit consisted of revenue representatives. Revenue representatives handle cases under a certain dollar amount that could not be closed in collection office function and that did not require more experienced personnel such as revenue officers. Revenue officers were the other major group of employees in the collection field organization. Revenue officers handled high dollar cases. Uh, these were the cases that required visit to the taxpayers and uh, those that collection office function, revenue representatives could not close. Revenue representatives made outgoing calls from the office. In addition, they went to taxpayers' residence, residences 
to attempt to collect overdue taxes. The incoming call unit handled calls generated by the letters. When a call came in to a collection representative, he or she would try to get enough information from the taxpayer to become familiar with the case and to take it to the next step, which could be asking the taxpayer to come in or arranging to research the case and return the call later. It was difficult to close incoming call cases. Representatives did not have the cases in front of them and it was extremely difficult to find them among the thousands of paper accounts in the office, many in some stage of transition. The walk-in unit staff dealt with taxpayers who appeared in person at the office. They could make adjustments to accounts or authorize installment agreements. They could also release letters pending satisfactory arrangements to pay the account. The research unit, whose personnel were known as TARS, Tax Account Representatives, handled the more difficult cases and special projects such as PRP, Problem Resolution Program cases. Such cases involving disputes with the IRS over the amount owed required immediate resolution. Collection office function was an operation inundated with paper. Any action taken on accounts involved paper. Every time an employee worked on an account, he or she had to write a summary sheet and attach it to the account. From the time an account was received to the time it was fully processed, uh, anywhere from 5 to uh, 10 to 15 separate pieces of paper would be added to it. An individual account could end up being more than one inch thick. Compounding the paper problem was a rising inventory. In 1976, IRS had 614,000 accounts receivables in inventory. By 1982, this inventory had increased to almost 2 million accounts. In dollar terms, accounts receivable increased from $1.7 billion in July of 1976 to $7.6 billion in December of 1982. Consequently, collection office function became a cumbersome, outmoded, paper-laden system that could no longer handle the workload. Both managers and employees agreed that cough had come to a point where it was literally out of control. It became an operation where the better part of one's time was spent trying to locate lost cases. To find a case, it often required more than three hours. The cough system was not very efficient at following up on cases either. Account representatives would tell taxpayers that they had 10 days to pay. However, that was rarely pursued in a timely fashion. It got to the point where the taxpayers knew the time frame was slow. So even though IRS told them that they had 10 days to pay, they knew that there wouldn't be a timely follow up and that they had at least a couple of months to pay the amount. There were other problems in the COF organization as well. Employees in the incoming call units had difficulty handling the calls because they did not have easy access to the taxpayer's accounts. As noted above, accounts were continually in transition. To get the pertinent background information, the collection representatives would have to ask the taxpayer, adding to the length of the calls and casting doubts on the information's validity. Lack of easy access compounded the number of errors in the system. Overall, the climate in the collection office function was described as very unstructured. The offices consisted of one big open area with desks almost on top of one another. Part of the chaos existed because COF employees often worked a case to completion with a good amount of discussion back and forth among employees over correct procedures. Moreover, employees had considerable freedom to move throughout the office, usually searching for a case or consulting the IDRS terminal for information pertaining to it. 
let's talk about the control systems available under the collection office function uh, at the level of office performance uh, collection office function supervisors would track trays of accounts by cycle each week was considered a cycle they would meet weekly to discuss the status of the work and then shifted personnel to whatever area seemed to need help supervisors activities therefore consisted primarily of planning initiating and following the progress of the work individual performance appraisal was sporadic to review work cof supervisors would pull the accounts out of the trays and check that they were handled properly for the most part the review process consisted of monitoring cases not individuals as it was often difficult to trace faulty work to a particular individual moreover going through trays was done about once every 4 months according to one employee therefore employee performance appraisals were only weekly associated with how they actually performed their work before the transition to the acs the majority of the people working in collection office function had been there a long time irs offices were staffed mostly with older ladies who knew their jobs well and helped each other in completing cases these staff members did not receive the proposal to shift to acs with much enthusiasm a lot of the cof staff particularly those who had the seniority to transfer elsewhere in the system did not go to acs as a result irs lost a lot of the technical knowledge they possessed with the change over to the new system irs had to hire almost 50% of the people from outside the organization and train them from scratch a lot of the senior people did not transfer to acs because of the stories that was circulating about what it would be like attached to the computer terminal all day on this slide we shall talk about the technology of the new automated collection system the automated collection system acs was a computerized inventory control system that consisted of three computer components first component was called idrs integrated data retrieval system the second component was an ibm system and the third component was a rockwell acd automated call distrib distributor idrs was a master computer located in the service centers and linked to the acs call sites taxpayer information was punched into this computer at the service center and fed to acs call sites if after a fourth notice to the taxpayer a return had not been filed or taxes were still outstanding the idrs also furnished acs sites with relevant updates regarding account details the ibm system consisted of a mainframe that contained the database of acs accounts and controlled work processing on a priority basis to the several terminal staffed by account representatives acd provided for the most cost effective routing of outgoing telephone calls and allowed incoming calls to be routed to available employees the rockwell system automatically connected all incoming and outgoing lines to employee terminals allowing for a large volume of calls to be handled simultaneously outgoing and incoming calls represented the heart of the acs operation the overall system also incorporated skip tracing techniques third party contacts and automated sources for locating taxpayers and their assets cases could be accessed in the acs by inputting a specific taxpayer identification number or by present or by pressing the next case key uh, which automatically displayed the case with the highest priority in the system there was a three tiered priority system in which uh, in general workload in the highest tier had to be completed before that in a lower tier in the sending order of priority the three tiers were number 1 time constraint cases number 2 assigned employee cases and number 3 scheduled follow update cases 
Time constraint cases were accessed when a best time to call the taxpayer had been identified. Assigned employee cases were seldom used since account representatives regularly reassigned their cases for others to follow up. Scheduled follow up date cases, which constituted the majority of cases in the ACS system, followed essentially a first in, first out method that ensured that all cases were worked on. They were worked on according to oldest follow up date first and then highest dollar value. Thus, in general, a large dollar case with today's follow up date would not be accessed until all of yesterday's low dollar cases were completed. On this slide, we shall talk about the structure of uh, the ACS call site. Uh, each ACS call site was organized along three basic functions. Uh, these functions were contact, investigation, and research. After the respective service center sent out its notices, case information was fed directly into an IDRS terminal located in the call site. It was then stored in the IBM system and could be accessed from the terminal of the employees. Uh, the contact uh, representatives sat at a computer terminal and pressed a key for the next case. Then the case with the highest priority in the system flashed onto their screen. After reviewing the salient information, he or she pressed the dial key and the computer automatically dialed the taxpayer's telephone number. If there was no answer or the line was busy, the computer automatically rescheduled the case for another time. If the contact representative reached the taxpayer, he or she then attempted to resolve the case. Whether successful or not at this point, the employee noted on the screen what action had to be taken as a result of the call. If a letter had to be sent out, the employee typed in a code and the letter was computer generated overnight at the appropriate service center. The investigation function paralleled the work of process review in collection office function. Investigation staff attempted to find telephone numbers for taxpayers when none were available on the ACS computer file. They scanned available phone directories or called third parties to locate either taxpayers or their assets. When the ACS sites were first established, the research function handled the more difficult cases plus incoming calls. Subsequently, in some of the ACS call sites, incoming calls were handled by a contact unit. The research function could access both the IDRS and ACS terminals with IDRS information used to supplement ACS information when complex adjustments had to be made to resolve a case. The research function also handled correspondence. We can see that uh, by changing to ACS, uh, the structure became more simplified of the six functions that existed in the collection office function. Uh, in the new system, uh, only three of the functions were kept. In part, this new simplified structure was instituted because of the assumption that ACS would be able to close a lot more cases as well as higher dollar cases than was possible in COF. Those cases that ACS could not close would go directly to revenue officers who were now positioned in the district field office. The walk-in function was also kept separate from ACS. Thus, ACS became a backroom operation without face-to-face -face contact with the taxpayer. This new structure also resulted in an operation isolated from the rest of the collection, uh, one not as well integrated. ACS no longer had personnel directly linked with their collection colleagues in the field operation. Concerning the sense of isolation, one senior manager in ACS commented, the rest of collection think we are a dialing for dollars operation. ACS officers were generally bright. ACS offices were generally bright and roomy. All employees had their own terminals located in private cubicles. On the whole, they were discouraged from discussing case procedures with one another. 
because supervisors felt that it wasted other employees time moreover because procedures were constantly changing it was safest for them to consult with the supervisor if there was any confusion as cases appeared on the employees screen randomly an employee rarely followed them through to the completion also in acs there was no reason to move from one station to check the idrs terminal because it was connected to the employees terminal consequently employees generally spent their entire working day at their terminal within their particular function it was more difficult for them to learn the work of other functions or to get to know other employees thus in introducing the technology there was a reintegration of three specialized functions but one that made them and the employees working in them more isolated and less likely to follow individual cases through to completion from a performance standpoint uh, acs addressed many of the collection office functions problems because all accounts were on the computer there was rarely a lost case moreover correspondence could be easily matched to the appropriate case stored in the computer uh, therefore eliminating time lost looking for the cases the response time in acs was much faster than in collection office function when a time limit was placed on an account an account representative entered a code and that case came up on the indicated day for further action because an employee could quickly call up the history sheet of a particular account follow up on cases was also improved in acs the three factors noted above that is the ability to find cases follow up on cases and control incoming calls were central to the improvements in work process and productivity of operations that resulted from the change over to acs now let's talk about uh, the control systems offered in the new uh, acs system uh, perhaps the biggest difference between uh, the collection office function and the acs system was the amount of performance monitoring done in acs it was driven in part by the new technologies capabilities and in part by the management's insistence that reviews be done to monitor the benefits of the new automated system and its effects on employee performance in terms of office performance the computer provided timely information that help managers track the work status a system analyst continuously monitored the amount of incoming and outgoing calls and depending on the priorities of the site personnel could computer gate or schedule them accordingly consequently there was less manual scheduling and virtually no tracking of workflow in acs the acs technology allowed for additional real time information on a variety of performance indicators for the entire office the computer monitored the number of calls received the number of calls answered the average speed of answer the number of calls attempted the number of calls completed the average work time of calls the number of accounts closed and the number of dollars collected however it was only a portion of the information available in addition reports were generated that provided information on resource allocation within the call site such as inventory levels by type of account uh, the type of closure on account or transfer to another part of the irs and a breakdown of over age accounts in inventory at the individual level there were three distinct sources of performance monitoring information number 1 computer monitoring number 2 telephone monitoring and number 3 teach reviews uh, in computer monitoring uh, machine monitoring was the most uh, pervasive source of information on work behavior and productivity Uh, the computer provided supervisors and managers with information concerning an employee's average talk time, uh, number of, of calls attempted, number of calls completed, time spent away from the computer, and time between calls. This information was sometimes relayed to the employee, especially when one or more of the indicators 
were judged to be below target. However, the use of machine statistics for formal performance appraisal was not allowed according to the union contract. In telephone monitoring, uh, as outlined in the ACS management handbook, supervisors were required to monitor at least two completed calls to taxpayers uh, or a minimum of one hour per employee per week. Uh, in this activity, the supervisor listened to the conversation and rated the employee on uh, key criteria such as correct procedures, courtesy and ability to control the conversation. While monitoring the telephone conversation in process, the supervisor simultaneously viewed a screen display of the account the employee was working. Uh, according to the IRS monitoring guidelines, uh, the telephones subjected to monitoring uh, must be clearly marked so that the telephone users will have full knowledge of the monitoring possibilities. Uh, another requirement that was that, that all employees must be notified in writing uh, that their work related calls are subject to monitoring. This should be accomplished semi annually. In addition, new employees must uh, be given the same notification prior to assuming monitored telephone duties. The results of this review were supposed to be given to the employee immediately on completion of the call. Uh, used in the formal process, uh, performance appraisal process, the reviews had direct implication for promotions and other valued outcomes. Referring to the monitoring reviews, one employee stated, it's a number game. If you don't have the numbers, you are not going to move up. The teach reviews of employees work uh, were generally done on a weekly basis and uh, consisted of the supervisor uh, using a computer terminal or hard copy to display all cases worked by an employee over a period of time. According to the handbook uh, of the ACS, the supervisor had to determine whether the employee was uh, analyzing ACS data correctly, making correct decisions and recommendations, initiating effective follow-up actions, following procedural guidelines, and encouraging callbacks or correspondence unnecessarily. The results of the review were either communicated to the employee face-to-face -face or left in his or her dropbox. Regardless of the method of feedback, the results were used in the formal quarterly and annual employee performance appraisal sessions and could have a direct bearing on such outcomes as promotions. Thus, one of the distinctive features of ACS call sites was the amount of reviews that supervisors and managers were responsible for. Moreover, the technology's capability to monitor both system-wide and individual level performance made ACS work operation radically different from collection office function. The impact of the transition to ACS on supervisors and employees' jobs can be summarized as follows. Supervisory work became more singularly focused on the monitoring of employees' work, requiring significant amounts of time. As a consequence, employees were monitored much more heavily than in the past. Moreover, they were much more restricted in their movements their job consisting prim primarily of interacting with a computer terminal only. Now let's talk about uh, the uh, reactions of the supervisors and employees uh, to uh, the transition to the new system, that is the ACS. Let's first talk about the reaction of the supervisors. Uh, the technology in ACS helped to rationalize supervisors' job. Their work became much less fragmented. However, it had serious implications for how they viewed themselves and the amount of discretion they felt they had. Most supervisors uh, stated that uh, on the whole they preferred ACS. However, this view was not without qualification. Uh, some referred to themselves as glorified watchdogs. Supervisory discretion was an issue throughout the call sites. There was often a strong feeling of control of both controlling and being controlled. Some of the supervisors felt that the requirements for telephone monitoring dictated 
that they give feedback. They saw it being ineffective as it was made routine rather than spontaneous. However, other supervisors felt differently. They viewed the control potential of the technology as a positive aid to accomplishing their tasks. Supervisors' activities centered on reviews. When asked to relate their most important activities in a typical week, supervisors nearly unanimously mention employees' reviews, particularly telephone monitoring. In general, a significant amount of supervisors' time was involved in doing one review or another. Some supervisors noting monitoring's potential for developing employees, viewing it as a great way to give employee instant feedback on their progress. This attribute was often mentioned. However, the reality was seen as far different in many cases due to the tension between meeting the monitoring requirement and realizing the feedback potential. In the new ACS system, uh, the employees were not particularly bothered by the lack of interaction with other employees. Uh, the feeling of confinement resulting from uh, a required constant presence at their terminals uh, was mentioned by employees as a single factor they most disliked in the transition to ACS. Also important was that uh, they no longer worked uh, a case through to completion, uh, which decreased their job satisfaction. They noted that their performance was reviewed more, but that had not in itself been a problem. Most employees thought the monitoring was all right if it was conducted properly. Indeed, the majority of employees interviewed concurred with management's assessment of the general need for monitoring and some of its positive impacts. On the whole, employees stressed that how computer-aided monitoring was approached made all the difference. Some even suggested that supervisors should do more telephone monitoring, but it should be used strictly as a quality control tool. So now if we sum up the case, uh, we can say that uh, the collection division of the IRS was uh, committed to making the technology initiative work and to learn from this uh, experience in order to automate other operations. The enhancements in productivity and service uh, that the IRS was able to provide with the introduction of ACS was impressive. Uh, yet the reactions of the managers and employees who, who had to make the system work suggested that there was still considerable room for improvement. Uh, there were at least three options that IRS felt worthy considering seriously. Uh, the first uh, option was to restructure uh, ACS work organization into semi-autonomous teams. Uh, such teams would uh, comprise uh, members who among them had all the functional expertise necessary to handle cases to completion. They would then be given a batch of cases to work on and their performance would be monitored only as to how they handled the cases. Scheduling workflow and monitoring individual performance would be the team's responsibility. IRS uh, technical team uh, had pointed out that this option would require an investment of more than $1 million to redesign the technology so that the teams could handle cases from start to finish. The teams would also have to change to a uniform pay scale instead of the three pay scales that then existed for contact, research, and investigation function. Such a change was certain to raise the salary bill. The second option was to retain ACS employees to become more versatile and able to handle all aspects of the collection function. For example, employees would handle cases as best they could from start to finish. This option, like the one above, would necessitate raising the pay scale to compensate employees for the additional skills required to handle all of the functions in closing a case. In addition, there would be significant retraining cost. The final option was to work within the present organization, but to change the way the system was managed. Seven factors were significant in influencing employees' reaction to ACS. They were 
the immediacy of monitoring information feedback, the nature of the feedback, the clarity of the criteria used to rate performance, the method of monitoring, the supervisor's knowledge of the job, the supervisor's leadership style, and the employee's prior disposition toward computer monitoring. Taken together, these factors pointed to the importance of effectively managing the way in which the monitoring process was used and the information generated from it communicated to the employee. Experience had shown that the way management approached monitoring did make a difference to its effectiveness and employees' reactions to it. Okay, so we have uh, discussed the case uh, in quite uh, a lengthy detail. So this particular slide actually provides uh, a recap or uh, a summary of the case itself. So we have already discussed that the automated collection uh, project uh, involves uh, three things. The first, uh, a substantial change in the business process. And then uh, <coughs> the use or the role of information technology as an enabler of the improvement desired and a dramatic change in the organizational arrangement. Uh, now, obviously, uh, uh, if we compare the uh, ACS project of the IRS, uh, Although the technical team did not consider it as a, a re-engineering effort or re-engineering project, but the way it radically changed the, uh, the process, uh, the work at the IRS, it was considered a re-engineering uh, project. Uh, many of the re-engineering project uh, uh, does not succeed, but uh, in the case of IRS, uh, ACS system, we see that uh, uh, it was, there was a success. It, there was success in the terms of uh, economy and there was success in terms of the performance improvement of uh, the the system. However, despite uh, this uh, the success that the ACS system achieved, there are still some important issues that need to be resolved. The first issue is the control on workers. <clears throat> the second issue is the quality of work life, and uh, the the third one is the 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 workers and the uh, supervisors' uh, reaction, the unpleasant reaction towards the new ACS system. Uh, there is one very important lesson to be learned from uh, this particular case and uh, this, uh, this lesson is that, that it is actually difficult or impossible to anticipate all of the problems and issues that will arise from a major process redesign. These are some of the teaching objectives of these case. Uh, these uh, teaching objectives are self-explanatory, so we are not going to spend much time on that. Uh, you can read them and uh, all of these are self-explanatory, does not require much explanation. Uh, obviously, for every change in the organization or the process, there must be some objective. So uh, if we have the question that uh, what the IRS hope to accomplish in moving from the collection of its function to automated collection system, we can say that uh, there could be some operational or financial objectives or there could be some uh, technical objectives. And uh, uh, if uh, we ask uh, a question that uh, whether re-engineering can succeed if the primary uh, objective is not the process, uh, rather uh, to put the new system in place, then the, the, of course the answer uh, would be that uh, it may not be ad advisable. However, in the case uh, of uh, the ACS system of the uh, IRS, we see that uh, the re-engineering effort did succeed even though its primary emphasis was uh, the system and not the process itself. And uh, now uh, there is another question, for example, if we say that how important is that it was that the new system worked? Well, for the uh, IRS, it was very, very important uh, because uh, the IRS is actually uh, a, a highly bureaucratic organization that uh, undergoes a strict uh, scrutiny by the government. The, uh, the capital projects such as the ACS uh, are uh, audited by <coughs> both the internal as uh, external auditors and the auditors report are, uh, have carry much significant weight when the, the new projects of the same types uh, are uh, advised or uh, proposed uh, in the future. So uh, definitely the expenses of uh, uh, ACS uh, would have to be recovered uh, rapidly and visibly. 
so that uh, uh, when the uh, IRS want to uh, actually execute a similar type of capital project in the future, uh, they could uh, present ACS uh, as a project that was successful. Okay, now if we talk about the differences between the collection office function uh, and the ACS, uh, we can say that uh, the difference uh, involves uh, not only technology, uh, but also processes, monitoring and controls, physical structure of the offices, and work culture and climate. And we have seen that uh, how uh, these uh, differences were spotted in our discussion. Uh, in the course uh, uh, on reengineering, the process change should receive particular focus. Of course, uh, this uh, I have said this thing many a times uh, in uh, the previous uh, discussion of the cases as well. That in the reengineering effort, the, our focus is the process. However, in the case of uh, uh, ACS system, we see that uh, the focus was uh, the system and not the process. Now, if we talk about the old COF process, we can see that uh, there were six different functions, each of which might be accessing the uh, same account files, uh, each uh, uh, different type of uh, taxpayer interaction, such as outgoing calls, incoming calls, uh, and a different type, a different group of uh, the employees handled with them. Uh, and then uh, the work under COF, definitely, yes, it was a very, very social process. We know that uh, uh, under the COF, uh, there were older ladies who knew how uh, to do, complete their jobs. They frequently communicated with each other, moved uh, frequently from one point to another uh, in order to complete uh, the case. When we talk about the ACS process, uh, we know that uh, in the ACS, uh, the six functions were reduced to the three functions. And then uh, the uh, contact function handled the bulk of the taxpayer contacts. And uh, this uh, particular contact function uh, was also considered uh, a case management function or a single point of contact unit. Uh, in the ACS, uh, we have seen that uh, most of the time the employers were uh, busy with their computer terminal. They did not spend much time moving around. So uh, we can say that the work under ACS was a heads down, uh, dialing for dollars operation that was mentioned earlier as well. Uh, and then uh, under ACS process, all of the technology uh, process control and physical changes uh, led to very different work culture under ACS that was actually not very social. And that was the, the, the major difference uh, in the, uh, of the work culture between the ACS and the COF. This slide uh, summarizes the difference between the uh, collection of a function and the automated collection system. Uh, these differences are organized along six dimensions, uh, that is technology, process, uh, monitoring and controls, office facilities, and work climate and culture. Uh, on the next couple of slides, uh, we are going to pose uh, uh, certain uh, questions and then we are going to discuss some of the recommended answers of these uh, questions. Uh, the first question is that uh, what kind of person would be attracted to work in the COF environment? and what type of uh, person would find ACS appealing. So definitely ACS would uh, appeal to a completely different type of person, someone who is not actually very social. And uh, therefore, uh, it is uh, not surprising that uh, more than 50% of the former corrective office uh, function workers uh, left uh, the uh, collection function when the new ACS was implemented. The uh, second question is that whether the current culture is uh, unacceptable over uh, the long term. Uh, now, the Tim Brown, the assistant commissioner of uh, collection, uh, he felt that uh, he, uh, the IRS must do something uh, to make the culture more appealing to uh, the larger proportion of the employees at the IRS who are used to a highly social work culture. And... Uh, Although the such uh, boiler room culture are uh, very common in uh, other industries and uh, one can say that if uh, such a boiler room culture is, uh, is working in other, in other industry, industries, it may work in IRS as well. But however, the problem of collection uh, is uh, not simply that. Uh, one bigger problem for the collection is that they, are, uh, they have to transition from uh, one culture to another. That is uh, a culture that is highly social to a culture that is not uh, very social at all. Okay, so uh, if uh, we could pose a question that uh, why did collections need to increase the controls and monitoring level in the ACS environment? 
and then of course the most important reason uh, was to uh, prove that the system was uh, successful and cost justified <coughs> we had already discussed that uh, uh, all the capital projects were uh, audited both internally and externally uh, so it was very important for uh, irs to prove that the capital projects such as the acs was uh, not only successful but it was also uh, cost justified uh, the uh, other reason could be that uh, because uh, implementation of ACS uh, was uh, was possible. IRS now had the technology and tools that, that could uh, have this uh, particular uh, level of monitoring and control work. Before that, they did not have this technology available with them. And then the, uh, uh, while the level of controls does seem excessive, uh, this sort of monitoring is not uh, unusual in other industries. So, uh, if we have examples from other industries that this type of monitoring and control work over there, so we we are justified that this type of monitoring and control can work in IRS or a bureaucratic or government organization as well. Uh, if the IRS were going to change its approach to controls, which ones should be kept and uh, which should be eliminated? Well, uh, based on uh, our discussion and the employees and the supervisors' reaction towards the ACS, we can say. Uh, that the TH reviews uh, are uh, the most useful controls. However, that uh, the telephone monitoring is something uh, that appears to be least useful and that may be eliminated. We have already discussed this point earlier that uh, ACS was not conceived as a re-engineering project. This is because the focus of the ACS project was not the process itself, rather it was uh, the new system. They wanted to put in place the new system. Uh, so if you ask the question that how uh, would this project be different if done in a re-engineering co context, well, uh, although the most of the project would have remained the same, but uh, they, there would be a much uh, stronger emphasis on the process rather than the system itself. Uh, and then if you ask the question that whether the results achieved uh, from the project are sufficiently radical to be called re-engineering, well, uh, maybe or may not be because uh, the, the, the project itself was a success from both the economic point of view and the, the process improvement point of view. So maybe uh, we can say that yes, uh, it was considered uh, a re-engineering effort. However, uh, its focus was not, uh, was not the process itself. Okay, uh, now this uh, slide uh, talks about uh, the future actions, uh, uh, the, 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 the three options given here. Have already been discussed uh, on the conclusion slide before. Uh, in short, uh, uh, IRS has three options to consider now uh, to make the ACS system uh, more acceptable for the employees at the IRS. The first uh, option is the restructuring of the work into teams. Uh, the second option is the broadening of work skills of the employees and uh, creating a true case manager. Uh, that is, make employees a true case manager. And the third one is the uh, changes in the control system. There are a couple of important lessons that we can learn from the ACS experience at IRS. First is the re-engineering success. We can see that the ACS was a successful change in processes, systems, and results. The important thing or the important lesson learned is that if a highly bureaucratic government organization can succeed in such an effort, then uh, private sector organizations, which are not really uh, very bureaucratic, uh, then they can achieve similar sort of success as well. The uh, second part is, uh, or the second important lesson learned relates to the work design. Uh, we can see that the ACS was designed to focus on work at an individual level. However, uh, in future, if other organization implement the same type of project, that they must uh, understand and must focus that how the individual workers can react to such changes. The third lesson learned relates to the monitoring and control. Now we can say that the ACS situation raises the issue of how much computer-based monitoring is appropriate. And <clears throat> the important thing is that we need to keep uh, in, to keep our focus on the individual perspective, how the individual think that how much computer monitoring and control should be present. The last lesson learned is with respect to the prototyping. Uh, the IRS, created an organizational prototype in the collection area. How? Because when they implemented ACS, uh, they actually created a prototype 
<coughs> this prototype can be implemented in other uh, departments of the IRS as well. However, note that uh, they were not able to predict all the features that were required. So it is important to understand that <coughs> it could be very difficult to predict all the factors of the system in advance. 